Hi, tonight it's going to be a little bit different. These are still side items that you can have at your Thanksgiving feast this year, but um, I'm going to cook three things tonight because we're going to eat them tonight, so I thought I might as well film it while I'm cooking supper. But first is acorn squash. I didn't know what to do with this. I saw it in the, the grocery store, and I didn't know what to do with it, so I learned some things and how to, do, how to deal with it. So I like it roasted, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. First, you have to cut it, and you want to cut it in half, and it's hard to cut, so be ready to put in some muscle, and I have to get on my tippy toes. All right, do the other one. I'm going to scoop all of this pulp and seeds out of the middle and then I'm going to slice them and we'll put them on the tray and then we'll season them. Alright, I have got them cut, sliced, and almost in a single layer. They're just a little overlapping, but that's okay. Just because I have a little bit too many. So what I'm going to do now is use a little garlic flavored olive oil and drizzle it on. These are my flavored olive oils that I love so much. This is a garlic flavor. It gives, a, this gives a lot without having to actually add garlic. So the season. All right, and then I'm gonna use <clears throat> um, cranberry hair flavored white balsamic vinegar. Cranberry pear is, is the flavor I'm going to pair, uh, put with the squash today. It's going to caramelize really nicely. Alright, so some sea salt. And some cracked black pepper. pepper. all over and we'll do the same thing for the other side. Now if you want to add any other seasoning you can. Um, it's very uh, adaptable vegetable. You can season it with you know, a spice blend that you like. Um, you can go uh, savior or you can go in a, a different direction. You could put some nutmeg or ginger or cinnamon, that kind of thing on here. So it all works very well. I'm going to put it in a 400 degree oven for about 30 minutes or so and check it out at that time and see if it's ready. Okay, now I'm going to start on the soup. We're going to have a leek and cauliflower soup. It comes from the Plant Paradox Cookbook um, by Dr. Stephen Gunn III. And uh, it's very, very good, and it has no cream in it. It's dairy-free and gluten-free, just like everything is on this channel. So I'm gonna start with two stalks of celery.
All right, one pound of leeks. I'm gonna um, cut those up. Now with leeks, they, they get dirt inside here. So I'm gonna go ahead and slice it up and put it in a colander and we're gonna rinse it out for leek really well. They have a, um, a onion type flavor, a milder, a little bit milder than a regular onion flavor, but they're, they're really good. get to the green part you don't want to use too much of this because <clears throat> for one thing your soup you don't want it to have a green color but it's it's also I mean it's fine to use it's good to use in stocks but it's more oniony flavor the flavor is stronger as you get toward the green part One head of cauliflower, just cut into to, to chunks. Three to four cloves of garlic. All right, I think that's it. Now, I'm gonna move the camera so that you can see um, how I put it all together. Okay, so here's my soup pot. And I have some olive oil in here on medium high heat and it's all heated up. So now we're gonna start adding our ingredients. Leek, I'm going there first. Followed by celery, garlic, and the cauliflower. Right. And we're going to go ahead. Let's stir. I'm going to add seasonings. I need about a half a, a teaspoon of fresh nutmeg. So, really easy. You just buy the, the nutmeg that are it's whole and get a little fine grater and just grate it. And this is a piece of parchment paper. I'll do it over here if you can see. Just on a piece of parchment paper. Because it, you know, goes everywhere. I'm going to need about twice of that of salt. So, not that much. And even more black pepper. If you wanted to, you could use uh, white pepper and then it wouldn't you know, show up so much in the soup. 
but it's okay. We're just just home. Family's meeting tonight, so if I was making this for a guest, I might would use white pepper. All right. The smell is really good. Fragrant. You can smell that onion and the garlic and the nutmeg. All right. So now we're going to add um, two quarts of chicken stock and a bay leaf. And we're going to put a lid on it and turn it down low and let it simmer for about 30 40 minutes until the cauliflower is really tender so that we can blend it all together. So, two quarts. Here's one. Here's two. I'm going to bring this to a boil. Once it starts boiling, I'm going to put a lid on it, turn it on low, and let it cook. Almost forgot the bay leaf. One bay leaf. You have to remember to take the bay leaf out before you blend it because you're not really supposed to eat bay leaf. Okay, it's starting to boil. I'm going to put a lid on it and we'll leave it alone. I'm actually going to move it to the back burner because I'm going to have something else on the front burner in a minute. Okay, while that is cooking, I am going to start on my kale. Now, I treat kale like I would um, collard greens in the south. How we cook them there and how my family's always cook them but the thing about these is they're fresh from my um, garden tower that I can even eat we can eat this the stems and they're not too tough or woody or anything like that so I'll, I like to cut up the stems and have them in the sauce with the onions hi I told you I had a tower garden and here it is the top is uh, still growing I just replaced everything else so it's pretty bare right now but these are ready and it's kale, so I'm gonna cook that as a side. So I was gonna just cut it right off the tower garden fresh. There's no soil. It's very, very clean. This is what we're gonna have tonight. It's gonna be yummy. out my secret on how not to cry when I'm cutting onions because uh, it's pretty bad. My eyes are very sensitive. Every single time. Every time. I really should learn my lesson and do my little trick all the time. And though it's embarrassing and you're going to laugh when I do it. I promise you, you're going to laugh. My kids laughed. <laughs> my husband laughed. So, I'm sure you will laugh too. But it works. And my eyes won't burn like they're doing it right now. So,
going to start on the um, onions and the kale stems. We're going to go ahead and start those in the skillet that has olive oil. It's been heating up. I'm going to go ahead and salt and pepper this just a little bit. Just, whoop, that is a lot of salt. Probably won't need any more salt in this whole thing. Okay, had that open to the open side instead of the sprinkle side. Got a lot more salt. But, it's okay because I was going to add more salt later, so I'm going to not add any more salt. See if it'll work. All that cooks, I'm going to go ahead and cut up the kale leaves. Hmm. I forgot something. I don't know how I forgot this because we do this all the time in southern cooking. But I'm used to using olive oil all the time now. I used to not. I used to always use this, but I'm going to add it to the to, to the kale tonight. It's bacon grease. I usually would start with a couple of slabs of slices of bacon and use the grease that it makes. But since I didn't do that, I'm just going to use my handy dandy uh, bacon grease catcher. So every morning when I or my husband cooks bacon, they will pour the grease in here. So I'm going to add a little bit for flavor. It's real life. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you like it really is at home. I'm cooking. This is it. So. Now this looks like a lot of kale, but it's going to cook way down and it won't be that much. But it looks like a lot. Overflowing and it's not going to hold it, but it will. Say hey to the camera, man. <laughs> he walked away. <laughs> See, it's, I'm piling it up because it looks like it's not going to hold it. It's like full. It's over full. Over full. But you will see it will cook way down. I'm going to add a little bit of water. I'm just going to use a lid to get some water. Just a little water. And then cover it and just leave it alone. Turn it temperature down and just let that cook. Now it's time to check our soup. Um, cauliflower is a little bit still tough, so it's not ready. So let's check the, the acorn squash. It's looking good. See? 
I'm not sure it's ready yet either, so let me see. It's ready. Okay, I'm back, and the um, soup is ready to be blended. Now, I wanted to tell you that if you will turn the apricot, not apricot, the acorn squash, halfway through, you'll get a more golden finish, and it'll be, uh, it's better than not turning it, so just letting you know. Okay, so, turn this off, pull it up, you can see that the soup is fork tender. You can just easily put your fork right through any cauliflower that's in here. Now here's the bay leaf. We want to make sure to get that out. All right. So again, I'm going to use my immersion blender because it's easier than pouring it in the in the regular blender but you can do that it's perfectly fine it works great matter of fact it's probably even more smooth than this way but we're gonna do this it's gonna be loud so but fast forward <laughs> Soup is ready. I'm gonna move it out of the way and let's check on our kale. Ah, see how far down it's gone? Ah. See, it cooks right down to where you need that much so that you'll have a big enough helping for the whole family. that salt that we put in earlier it ended up being too much or it's okay. little traditional balsamic vinegar. This is from the place I told you I like to get um, the flavored vinegars and it's just going to give it a kick. Get a little more pepper. So the timing on everything, uh, the butternut squash took about 45 minutes or so. Not the butternut squash, the acorn squash took about 45 minutes or so. The soup took about that long as well. Um, and the greens take about well, almost that long. So if you're trying to time it out, they, they almost, they all take about the same time. on my plate. I've already got the squash. I'm going to put some kale. And we will have these also for our Thanksgiving. The soup. Turn this off. that. It's 
not really thick, but it tastes really tasty. I've made it before. Now on top of the soup, I, I, um, I browned some almonds, toasted them, add a little coconut oil with it and some salt to give them a little flavor. And so I like to just drop a few on top of the soup. Squash just cuts right through the skin and all, very ready to go. Very tasty. It's got a little bit of sweetness to it, which is nice. Collard greens I've tasted, but they're still not collard greens. <laughs> they look like I cooked them like collard greens, but it's kale. Looks good. It still has a, a crunch. And the deep south, um, I would been I would have been told that is not done yet because it still has a crunch. <laughs> you, you could cook it to death usually uh, in the deep south. And here's the soup, piping hot. Do you see the smoke? Yeah, you can see it. There it is. It's good. It's a little thin. Um, I think I might would add another head of cauliflower and it would thicken up. I think that's what I would do because uh, it's just a little bit thin for me. But I do like the crunch of the almonds on top. So you might give that a try. But yeah, I think it needs another. I think I'd double, I'd double the cauliflower. Enjoy. If you enjoyed this video, I hope that you will subscribe below. It will help me out a lot. Thank you.